Well, we have a new tier 10 defender, and this one, the Ironhide, is probably the most versatile out of all the tier 10 defenders, and even the tier 9 defenders that we have. Hey everyone, Derpy here, and today I'm going to jump into Let's Build an Ironhide. Now, as we're going through this, I am going to show you a few things in the stat block, because it is really interesting, and you also definitely want to build at least two of these. I'm going to then run through the build, the weapons, the specials, and the armors, and then lastly show you a few base defense tips and talk about mountains. Just getting started here, this thing is the standard defender. It is going to not move, we can only assume. This thing is not going to be controllable in your base, so you can't drive it. You can never drive guard fleets anymore in the past like two years. It just isn't going to happen. Now, it has the same amount of armor points in the same magnitude, at least, as the other tier 10 defenders. Nothing too much to worry about there. In terms of the weapon bonuses, it is an attack hole. It's a rocket hole. So it is going to do a little bit of damage, but not, might not be quite enough to break deflections. It does have base rocket reload and explosive damage, two important stats. And the building damage here is from the Conquest Shard. If you were at Conquest Shard as level 3, you might not have this. Mine is level 5. The basic defenses are interesting and does give you a hint to what this works better against. It has a ton of penetrative deflection, which is something we will of course see in a few other things as we go through the other deflections and the stat blocks. Again, it does have a movement speed, but you can't control it, so stick it behind a portal if you don't want it to move, or put a sync drive on it, and the sync drive will match the speed of the slowest ship in your fleet, which is generally your, your overload or your overlord carrier or your gatekeeper with zero. So as long as the overlord carrier here is alive, this thing won't move if the Ironhide has a sync drive. Now it also does have thermal, nothing too much to worry about there, I don't think. Although maybe that's telling you something, I have no clue. The special abilities are where it gets really, really interesting, and you want to start paying attention here if you haven't too much already. It has a Structure Iron Skin Aura, which only applies to buildings, and this gives it some pretty massive buffs. It does have a Duplicate Aura Cap 2 right here, which means you can apply two of these. Every structure within 64 range, and by the way, that's just the outside, the corner touching for the structures, unless it's a portal, in which case it has to go pretty much through the center, gets to increase the deflection by this amount. So it helps out versus any ballistic stuff we have, which I don't think is really anything in today's game. Concussive, which is the exterminator you won uh, in today's game, and explosive, which would be a little bit of, I have no idea what, but the really interesting one is penetrative. We get a ton of penetrative deflection bonuses against the Sky Saber. This is 6 million when you have two of these, which is enough to cancel out and make the enemy Sky Saber do zero damage to any buildings unless you see a crit, in which case there'll be a small amount of damage. So you can have your portals have 6 million extra deflection, which is huge. So put two of these things in range of your portals if you want to shut down Sky Sabers. Now, going through the actual Iron Skin Aura for the ships, this is not the buildings, this is different, because building damage is affected by building damage, like the stat and the stat block from, say, Siege Targeting 4, so, which is why these numbers are much smaller, because they're not multiplied by 5 when the ships are attacking, if that makes sense. This again has bonuses to concussive, explosive, and penetrative. We only really see concussive and penetrative in today's game. This is again duplicate or cap of two. So you can add on 1 million deflection with two of these onto your overlord carrier or your badgers. Realize it does not apply to itself. So this hole only has a base penetrative deflection of in your defense stats here, 1.2 million. It doesn't have 2.2, it has 1.2. The only other thing is there is this built-in targeting system like we saw with the Badger. If this can move to something, it will try and get within a range of 20, which is of course what we expect. Alright, it's been about 4 minutes and I don't even have the weapons placed on this thing, so let's go ahead and get that started. Now the weapon is really only one choice, that is the rockets that came with this, the Steel Jaw Rockets. If you don't have this, I don't know what to tell you, just leave a blank or something for now. This really is the best and the only choice here. Now these are interesting in what they do. They do a small amount of damage. We'll run through those numbers at the end when I have all the specials and compare it to deflections. 
a small amount of damage for the salvo that this thing has. And interestingly, it has the defense category wall evasion. I don't believe that's accurate. I think it goes over all of the friendly walls regardless of what that number says, so ignore that number. The countermeasure evasion is going to be helpful, not that tier 10 conqueror ships have any countermeasures anymore, but the really interesting thing is the special abilities debuff. Now this will reduce the evade of the enemy ships by 8 or by 4% here and up to 8 duplicate ore caps. So you can debuff by up to 32% evade of the enemy ships, which is really, really interesting. Now this is a tactical field, so tactical field resist, which everything has these days, at least if you follow my Conqueror build videos, is going to work against this. So you won't see the full 32% debuff, but you will see probably a quarter to a third to maybe even a half of that debuff. So something with 16% lower evade is still going to, uh, that's going to matter a lot. So this is a very interesting hole, very versatile in that it does so many different things like I've been saying. Let, let's go ahead and jump into the specials. The first thing you have to do is decide if you want this thing to move or not. If you don't want it to move and you have a speed, you have a ship in your defense fleet with a combat speed of zero, you can put on one of these sync drives, pick your favorite color, it does not matter which one at all, because it only gives survival bonuses between these and this hole does not benefit from survival. So if you want it to stay stationary, put one of those on and that's the only decision there. Now, if you want it to move, the best engine for this is the regular Onslaught engine. It gives slightly higher evade than the tactical Onslaught engine, which, hey, whatever, that helps out just a little bit. Now, these next few slots here are going to be ones that are going to be doing damage. The primary damage dealing weapon is going to be the Desolation Warheads. And as I jump into those, I want to say the alternate special, if you don't have this, is uh, Speed System 5.6. Whatever you've got, I'm going to try and give alternate specials for all of these. Now, the next special is the damage dealing special, and like I said, it's going to be Desolation Warheads. If you don't have this, which you should because it's been out for quite a while now, using something like the uh, one that gives you a ton of splash to just basically high yield warheads, but it's a uh, high explosive shells for, this is your secondary option if you don't have this best one. Although most of you should have this, it's been on a lot of different holes since tier 8. Now, the next one here is the damage dealing special, and this is going to be a pure damage increase. There was one offered in the raid, and that was Explosive Force, which is interesting, if I can actually find it here. And that does help out because it increases your damage, but, if I can actually type here, that only increases your damage by 15% while reducing your range by 10. I'm not sure I'd do this, it is certainly an option. Veda, our Explosive Upgrade 2 is another option. If I can type, which is always difficult to do li live. Explosive Upgrade. This one will just give you 10% damage. It's an option too if you don't want to reduce anything. I would not use scope. What I would use is the regular garrison battery. Not limited, nothing fancy like that. Those are all probably all locked. Make sure you put on the garrison battery and not the assault battery because this one doesn't help. This will give you plus 18% explosive damage. The building damage, of course, does not matter. If you don't have this, it's tier 6, it's probably in the FM, use this one anyway. Now, these last two slots are going to get into being a little more interesting, and you can look at the clues of what was released with this hole for trying to decide what to put on here. Now, the one I'm going to tell you you probably want is one of the ones that actually, let's see which one I can find first here. This flanged warheads was released in the raid again when it hasn't been there for a long time this gives you rocket critical and rocket critical chance which are both fantastic things along with rocket range because of how conquerors in defenders are so deflection based criticals are really really important you definitely want to have the special over something that just gives you plus 10 percent damage plus 25 percent damage even i'm going for this one regardless it's a very very good special now, this last one I'm going for is one of the ones that is going to be an interesting one because most people might not actually have it. This was actually Cluster Warheads 3. Now, this has not been used since, like, the Praetorian, and you have three different options for here. Keep in mind they're a little bit chunky and they give you a ton of weight, but they also give you 400% rocket reload, which is fantastic. In the past, we've actually maxed out on our reload and it hasn't benefited you to use all of this, 
but now I did the math with this uh, base reload time of 8 seconds, with VXP it's 2 seconds, even with 500% rocket reload, you still have benefits from all this stuff here, it doesn't matter, you can use this one fine, if you're limited on weight, go ahead and use Cluster Warheads 2 or something else like that. If you don't have this, go ahead and check salvages. Go Google Battle Pirate Salvage Drop List Cluster Warheads 3, hit the salvage that has this with a Lucky Bastards crew, hit a lot of them around the area, um, other levels too if you're having trouble getting something, and that should get you Cluster Warheads 3, which is why I'm not giving you a secondary option for this one. Now, for the flanged warheads, your secondary option is anything else that gives you rocket critical chance if there is such a special which it does not appear that there is, so if you don't have that, go ahead and use Explosive Upgrade that gives you just 10% damage, or Agility System 4, which you'll notice I have no Evade on here whatsoever, which is going to be a bit rough, but hey, it's possible you can run something no Evade if you really want to. Now, for that reason, when we go over to the armor slots, I'm going to go all D5 EV armor, I could buff the deflections from being 1.2 million to 1.2 million plus 30,000 or whatever this defender armor gets you. It's really not going to do anything. I would not use this armor. It's such a small number compared to what attackers are using. Just go ahead, put on something that's going to help against the skyscapers for sure. Not that skyscapers really bother you, but maybe we have some ballistic accuracy based hole that comes out, so that will be useful. It's also really great for the combat speed and the turn speed, so D5 EV is actually a really helpful armor, even if skyscapers are not going to work against this thing anyway. Just keep in mind if everyone's hitting you using a DOS crew, evade might not actually be good. Now, we've got this thing, let's explain a little bit about it and a little bit about how to use it. By the way, you could also just leave the armor blank if you wanted to, if you don't think anything's going to help it out, and you don't think skyscrapers are going to hurt it in the first place. Now, I did mention a little bit about damage, and we would talk about it. You see 11 million damage here, which seems fantastic, especially when your actual cycle time is going to be like half a second. You, you're going to be dealing 11 million damage, what seems like every second, half a second, something like that. It's not quite actually true, because if you go over to the weapon here, it has a salvo of 5, meaning you take that 11 million damage number, divide it by salvo of 5, and by 3 weapons, so 730k damage per shot. Seems great, seems fantastic, until you realize all the tier 10 defenders using that armor, the explosive armor that gives you 300k, can easily get above that number, and are not, you're not going to break deflections, you're going to be doing 730k damage to things that have 900,000, 800,000, 750,000 armor using the tier 10 invader plate armor, so it's not going to be that useful. Now, if people don't have that and they're running one of those holes that doesn't, like an exterminator, an abomination, skysaber, without that armor, sure, you'll do some chip damage, but the main ability here is to destroy anything that doesn't have that and also to reduce the evade of incoming ships. Um, such as high evade tank abominations, so this could be quite useful. Now, this ship, I plan to build two of them, because this duplicate ore cap, if you remember in special abilities, was set to two. In terms of placing them, you want to do this the following things. Now, I'm going to pretend this piranha right here is a um, one of these ships, whatever they're just called, that I'm just talking about, the iron hides, and it has an aura with a range of 64, so this range 65 here on my piranha should be close enough for demonstration purposes. In the base planner itself, you'll just be able to see lots of stuff here, and if I go over the ship patrol range on the Piranha, you can see that it actually just buffed things within 64 range of it, and I'll go ahead and dock a few other things so you can actually see. So right now, this will be boosting all three of these portals, and every building that it actually touches, the portals, remember, it has to hit the center. The best spot for these is probably going to be in these mountains right here because the only attacking thing that shoots over mountains is the, say, um, Sky Saber. But the Sky Saber does about zero damage to this unless it crits, so that's going to work out quite well. Now, my Iron Hide is not going to be able to shoot over the mountains because it gets blocked by those. That doesn't matter too much. If it sits right here, it can buff my Overlord Carrier, it can buff all three of these portals, 
and maybe a few other random things if I throw anything back here. So that's going to be one spot I'll for sure place it. The other spot might be just over here in front of the portal, so it can buff all three of those if I turn off snap to grid and move it just a little bit closer and make you be able to see. This should buff all three of these portals right here. So we'll have the portals with 6 million penetrative deflection, maybe the Overlord carrier grabbed here, and just more things that are buffed by one ship here, one ship here. Your exact base layout is not going to be this one. It shouldn't be. So just try and put the thing where it's protected, hopefully hidden by mountains from abominations and exterminators. And so it can actually be buffing your portals, which are hopefully all stacked together. That's just my quick how to use idea here. So you'll notice that my build itself is uh, currently ongoing, and this is what I'm cooking up right now. I'll go ahead and put on the last special, which I was going for, which, geez, I've got to remember this thing now. Maybe I should watch my own videos. Um, this was going to be, let's see, <laughs> well, I forgot, but hey, whatever I had, it made sense. I think it was the flanged warheads. Yeah, it was definitely the flanged warheads. That's a very important special. Don't know how I forgot that one. And I'll just build two of these things and then put armor on if I do have extra time. So, hey, there you go. At this point, if you've been watching the video all the way through, I want to say thank you. Uh, watching these things through and supporting the videos by commenting and all that stuff really helps me. That's why I'm still making Battle Pirates videos. If you have any questions about Battle Pirates, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. The next video out coming soon will be the how to build the new tier 10.5 siege hole, which is the Damocles. I'll get that out pretty soon to you, probably before we see the VXP targets. With that, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you to everyone whose name appears on screen now. And as always, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.